but the first time we met was at uh mls mm -hmm. and since since we first met which is i don't know like three years ago something like that um you've made that transition from uh well, since i've known you mm -hmm. from being a coach like a like a facilitator mm -hmm. for for arno and then you've made that step up to now you run the the mls program in europe can you talk a little bit about like your journey through that seminar uh, you can go back to when you were a student or you can yeah. go back to when i started um thanks <clears throat> well it's it's definitely been a journey um i you know i started i've been taking the mls seminar since my first uh first week first two weeks mm. in school and it's always been really for arno for me has always been kind of like a living green book he's always been able to to go back to him and and refocus and stay on purpose with the seminars talking with him and our relationship grew as i went through school and moved out here and started going to started staffing at the seminars out here in barcelona mm -hmm. and it was just great to see him and the fire he brought to Europe, you know, when it started out, it was about seven, eight years ago, there weren't many uh, seminars mm. out here in, in Europe. And it was really nice to see uh, all the people get fired up, um, not just not just in a rah-rah kind of, kind of thing or even practice management, but really talk about what we do in, in uh, MLS, which is philosophy, and the art mm -hmm. and the science and bringing all that together and uh wow you know it's always been he's just been a beacon for me in that and so it was really intimidating uh starting off when he came to me about continuing it you know it was actually quite a shock i knew you know he's i knew at one time he was going to stop doing the seminars but it came really early to me. It, I wasn't prepared for it. It wasn't, mm -hmm. it was when I first got the news, it was like getting hit by a load of bricks, you know, like what already? Oh my God. Uh, and it was great. He, he took me under his wing and we, we did a lot of coaching, uh, you know, like weekly phone calls and, you know, did a lot of self, uh, self work, read a lot of books mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's been, it's been really amazing. Uh, I think that for me personally, a big step that made me feel I could really take this on was when I taught in Barcelona at BCC. Mm. Uh, you know, I'd always thought of... That would have been like a year before? That was about a year before, yeah. And um, yeah, it was 2016. It uh, started in October. Mm. And that was amazing, amazing experience. And just a great bunch of students. But it gave me the, I don't know, I, let me know that I had a voice. I didn't really, when you're, I don't know if this happens for everybody, but I, when I was, I found myself in, in the office learning things and, you know, uh, you know, serving people. And things would happen during the day. And I'd be like, oh, they never taught us this. And this is amazing. You know, I got to share this with someone. It's like I wrote it down in my head. Cause I don't take notes, mm -hmm. wrote it down in my head and Same. put it back there. Yeah. And then at some point I had got all of these notes in my head, like full, and I really wanted to share them. Right. And, um, one, one seminar, one MLS, uh, we had a staff dinner and Adrian came by for okay. that. Yeah. So I, I talked to him and it's funny cause before I moved out to Spain with my wife here, I actually contacted Adrian. Uh, just by email, I'd never met him before and said, hey, I'm, we're uh, graduating just, from life. Just to clarify, Adrian's the principal of BCC. Adrian, yeah, Adrian Wimbe. He's the boss. The boss man. <laughs> and uh, we had, I had emailed him, said, hey, you know, like I'm a new graduate from Life West and I'm coming out and I would love to help in any way with the school. And I never heard back from him. Okay. <laughs> you know, here, here's my CV. Never heard back from him. That's okay. Most people don't hear back right. from, uh, when they email Adrian. Even, yeah. even, when, even when you're in contact yeah. with him. Yeah. He, he's just, he, he does so much and he's committed to so many things. I don't know how he even has time to, to 
do basic uh, <laughs> fundamental things like eat and go to the bathroom and so i don't think he sleeps i think he, you know he just hangs upside down from the wall for 30 minutes yeah that's him he just charges like an iphone or yeah. I, you know i have a fear that he hangs upside down for a few hours like a bat and just recharges himself that way so yeah do, don't take it personally but yes please continue <laughs> no worries <laughs> perfectly viable uh, solutions for him. uh and so you know we were talking over dinner and i said to him yeah you totally blew me off in this email <laughs> <laughs> but I'd still love to help in any way. You know, I'm living in San Sebastian. Uh, I heard that Anna made the trip and, you know, I'd love to come out and see what I can do. And so we were in talks and that was it. And uh, yeah, of course, we, we were talking and it was we agreed on everything. And then I didn't hear from from him for, for two months. Mm. And, yeah. and I was Long like, month. my wife's like, are you, are you doing it? And I don't really know. I haven't heard from Adrian in a while. So, yeah. Yeah. And do you think with with taking over from MLS and you said that that was quite intimidating? But I've, I've found a, f a few times that sometimes you might have the capability to do something and it just takes the person on the next stage above you, it takes the coach to, to, to give you to give you that push and say, yes, you can do it and, and force you out of your comfort zone. You know? Absolutely. It's, you know, when you're when you are uncomfortable, that's when you look for for more comfort is where you look for a change. Um, I was talking with my daughter today when we came back from from lunch mm. and we were walking from the from the metro. And she says, I'm tired. Can you pick me up for a little bit? I don't want to walk anymore. And I said to her, when you don't think you can and you keep going, that's when you get stronger. Um, and, and so she took off running. Four? She's four and a half. Yeah. <laughs> she took off running and it was, stop, because she got to a light. <laughs> stop yeah. running. <laughs> so it, was, it was just amazing. For me, it was um, at, at Cairo Europe, D uh, Danny couldn't make it. You had some family things that you yeah. needed to do and you were like, yeah, I'm not going to make it. But you had organized the you'd organized like a small MLS group to, to, to meet up. And Danny messages me and says, right, basically, here's the thing. Uh, you're the one there who's been to the most seminars. Now, I'm not a coach. I'm not any kind of technique coach, nor do I particularly want to be if you're following me, if you're looking to me for coaching and inspiration, then there's only chaos here. Uh, turn your <laughs> turn back. Uh, you're going the wrong way. So yeah, I'm not a technique coach by any stretch. Uh, but Danny basically said, uh, you know, I want you to lead a session uh, on the beach, and I was like, right, okay. And really, to be honest with you, I just did it out of politeness. Oh. As I like, I didn't want to say, <laughs> I didn't want to say no. Um, uh, and we organized this session. I'm like, yeah, maybe five people are going to show up. So the morning comes, like the Saturday morning of Cairo Europe, and maybe 15 people rock up beside the swimming pool, and we go and do this session on the beach, and I'm like, oh, there's so many people. But we actually ended up, I really enjoyed it. And I said to them, I'm like, okay, if we were to do this tomorrow, are you all going to show up? And of course, everyone's like, yeah, 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 we're going to be here. Like, put on a session, we're going to be here. But then inevitably, that night, you know, they start having the beers, they start, they start getting a little bit drunk. And then on the, the lure of the carry Europe nights. That's it. On the on the on the on the next morning, only only I don't know like five seven of us showed up, but it was it was still a good group of the dedicated ones. Yeah, you know? that's still a lot of people. Mm. Like it, you know, just from one day to the next. Mm. And I and I really enjoyed it, but if it had not been for being in circumstances where I had to do it, there's no way I would have done it. So it's having that push. Yeah, you know, and and you were definitely prepared. I mean, I, I saw you. I know you're ready for it. And especially for what it was, it was just a workout session on the beach, mm. you know, which was great. And, you know, we've talked and and, and I knew you were ready to do it. Um, it's it's about, you know, it's, it's about being prepared and having the opportunity and just taking advantage of it. Mm. And it was great. And now you know that you can. Yeah. So isn't it that old saying where luck is where preparation meets exactly. opportunity? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, do you want to even talk a little bit about that? About like, because uh, for me, the 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 training ethos of M MLS was my first uh, seminar that I ever went to. Like you, first mm -hmm. first few weeks of uh, of chiropractic school, and for me, it was the the training ethos and the reps, and you know, you need to do ten thousand reps. Be a beginner. Just to be a beginner, that really struck with me. Like I've I used to journal way back then, and I've got journal articles where it's like I'm gonna do my ten five. I don't I've never counted. I don't know if I've. I hope I've hit my ten thousand reps you by did now. Fifty, like what is it? Hundred and fifty days in that, a row. Yeah, that that was that was between between, uh, second year and third year. I set myself a challenge for you know fifty days, and it was five hundred 
uh, mock frosts every day for 50 days. Now in the transition between third year and fourth year, I don't really count them. Mm-hmm. I'll just do generally 45 minutes an hour and I'll get, we ha- I have like the, the it's an old bit of Louise's mattress mm-hmm. and we, f- oh, we yeah. folded it in half. That, yeah. yeah, I'm going to show you it now. Awesome. We're currently in my, in my cell. In my uh, sweat yeah, <laughs> this, we're doing a sweat yeah. lodge. <laughs> we're, doing, yeah. we're doing a sweat lodge, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna build a new chiropractic college yeah. where you don't have to do pathophysiology. <laughs> yeah, once uh, we're we're here because Louise is doing a he's doing a talk, he's doing a charla through there, so that's yeah. that's why we're in the 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 cell of the prison that is chiropractic college here. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'll, you'll see the the famous foam. Uh, mattress that we've taped up and it's effectively a body but that 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 training ethos that yeah. i have that people kind of know me for now that came from mls that oh. came from training with you guys yeah yeah you know it's that's really what it is if you want to be a great chiropractor you need to practice chiropractic and if you are only practicing on the people who put their spines in your hands you're not being um you're not being honest with them. Mm. It's, it's like, you know, surgeons practice on cadavers. Mm. We practice on air or mattresses. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so it just, it just makes sense. Mm. But most of the problem is, is that 95, 99% of the profession, a lot of chiropractors out there, they get to 10,000 in their fifth year of practice. You know, and that's not, that, that's not acceptable, you know. Yeah. First of all, if they would get there a lot quicker if they did practice, they'd get to 10,000 adjustments. Mm. But it's, uh, yeah, it's really a bummer uh, how we, how we act. Uh, I know in, in the States sometimes, uh, and I did undergrad in Kansas, and uh, for people who don't know what, like, the American school system is, Everyone goes to undergrad. It's just like a delayed childhood or a, you know, a extended adolescence. Mm. But no, it's... What was your undergrad? I, uh, I did... Um, my major was in human biology. And I was actually doing a minor, uh, kind of a focus on pre-medicine. Mm. And uh, that gave me a little more insight into that the healthcare world, mm. uh, the sick care world. And um, so I talked with my... My uncle is a chiropractor. I come from a family of chiropractors. You're a real uncle. My not, real not, uncle. Not like my That's right. Not my chiropractic uncle. And definitely Arno's a chiropractic uncle. Okay. You know? Um, they're actually friends. He's friends with my family. Mm. Um, one of my cousins was at some of the first uh, camps that Arno put on. But uh, that's kind of how I met him personally, uh, more than just the seminars. So we talked about it uh, before I was finishing my final year about what's the difference in personality or or the person the actual person of a medical doctor and a chiropractor Mm. and it just it just clicked some of the things were you know creativeness uh uh, love for life um uh, passion you know we're more passionate people than medical doctors um you know it's just a belief in people there's more of not in all chiropractors but in the majority that Uh we have that uh always improving yeah. Kind of mentality. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's and and you can even see. You can see the profession of chiropractic evolving. But it's really on the fringes. It's people want it to evolve. There's a subset of chiropractors, a very small section that we belong to, that we're trying to push us forward, when a lot of other people are into the finite, um, uh, details of still fighting between themselves. Mm. You know, we talked earlier today about uh, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. And if it's all chiropractic, it's one trade. Sure. So when we talk about people, you were saying that, uh, yeah, halfway through school, people start to, you know, do the rounds. Uh, I'm, I'm going to now specialize in this, in Gonset or just Tago. I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do that. And that's great. But it's not great if they shut themselves off to every other type of chiropractic Mm -hmm. because every type of chiropractic is amazing and everybody needs chiropractic 
some people need this type of chiropractic, some people need a different type of chiropractic, sure. different, but it's all chiropractic. So if you, if you can study and learn different ways to adjust someone, different ways to reach their body, to reach their nervous system and to clear it out, mm -hmm. then you can, it's not a different trades. You're not a jack. You can master everything because it's all in the same thing. Nice. And it baffles me sometimes whenever you see the chiropractor, like f for, in my opinion, when you're going through school, you should focus on diversifies. By the time you've finished your four years or your five years, or sometimes in some places, your six years, you should be at least competent in diversifies. And I would also add upper cervical. Okay. You know, there takes so much study in upper cervical. I mean, just through the first three bonds, just to really, really study that and diversified. And, um, but then there, you can also learn, well, anyways, you know that they don't really teach much of the other stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, you get maybe like one course in this or that, and you can't really focus on it other than take seminars and you sure. can do that afterwards. Yeah. But the base of the base of chiropractic education now is, is manual adjusting full spine. Mm -hmm. And there's also thankfully upper cervical work to be done, you know, to be, to be learned. And so for me, MLS was a supplement for what I would learn in school, which was great and all, but then to almost like a, like it could be a diplomat in the art of adjusting. Right. Yeah. Because it takes you into that deeper level where, where it makes sense through the philosophy, where we talk about the science of it as, as in how to move your body, what is happening within the body. And, and it really just deepens your understanding of what you're learning basic at school. You know, the schools, you know, we got to learn, we got to learn pathophysiology mm. just because of the way the world, yeah, <laughs> darn it, <laughs> just because the way things are, you know, um, with, with laws, we need to learn that to be legally responsible. Mm. And that's cool. It's all good. In fact, I really like that stuff. I studied human biology. It was really sure. cool to learn that in a deeper level. And also the most important part, especially from chiropractic college, is learn it from a standpoint of love and awe of the body, of the magnificence of innate intelligence. Because you know that's, that's what differs from the education in, in medical school to our, our school. They learn me mechanistically, it's piece by piece. This happens, right. this, but there's no connection between it. You know, like you were saying, uh, nutrition is you know, uh, vitamin B12, you know, cal yeah. you know, scurvy and yeah, vit vitamin C, scurvy, vitamin E, rickets, like, yeah. And that's, that's the, that's yeah. we, we should clarify. I, um, I read a book called the ultra mind solution, which I really recommend, uh, that you get. It's written by Mark Hyman, who is a medical doctor. And we were talking about this earlier, basically, you know, this guy, he studied medicine and then he was in practice, but was unhappy, started gaining a lot of weight, lost a lot of his health. And then basically started looking at nutrition as um, a way of combating anxiety, depression, uh, ADHD, even things as serious as autism. And he said, it's written in the book, he's like, okay, in medical school, we do not learn enough about nutrition. The basics is, you know, vitamin C deficiency, you're going to get scurvy, vitamin E deficiency, I think you're going to get rickets. And the vitamin, vitamin E. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll agree to disagree. Yeah, basically, he said that the, the amount of nutrition that they learn is minimal. So it's the same as with chiropractic. You can't expect, unless you go out and you educate them, a medical doctor, they haven't been educated on it. So how do you expect them to know about it? How do you expect them to know about nutrition when they weren't taught it in school? Right. How do you expect them to know and understand what a chiropractor is whenever they haven't even heard about it? And in my experience so far, in my in my vast uh, <laughs> uh, experience, in my in my three years of chiropractic school um yeah well so far i hope uh i've found that medical doctors are actually quite curious you know when you find the right some of them just shun you off but a lot of them are quite curious and they're 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 eager to learn and they're eager to know and know more about what chiropractic can do and that it's not just musculoskeletal conditions but again it's that um 
always improving mentality mm-hmm. when it, um, we were talking about technique there when it comes to technique honestly I, I mean i'm 26 i'm still young i don't feel like i'll ever be done i don't think there'll ever be a point where i'm like okay you know i have my diversified i have my gonstead i have my whatever and that's me yeah it's that absolutely there, it's you know one of the one of my lectures at bcc was about that there really is to be a master you have to be on the decline in your skills actually mm. you have to have reached your peak and being able to give back that's one of the definitions it's with inherent within the definition of master you have to be you can't improve mm. so you know they have to be on the decline that's what a master is unfortunately we use that word a lot a chiropractic master mm. but it sounds like uh, i know a lot of people that that think jedi master you know like the thing that we're doing with the life force in the body yeah. it's really you know but um yeah it's it's also it's unfortunate but you know like to be a leader it's hard to have you have to have humility but not too much of it right and so in order to you know to be a master you need to lose a little bit of that humility that i i can't get much better okay and it's it's un, it's unfortunate but i think that has more to do with humanity and human qualities mm. than it does it has it's not a chiropractic thing it's it's in everything mm. that calls you know <clears throat> and that's where for me it was difficult to assume that that part of uh of taking over mls in europe is to be that mantle um it's, it's to, tough shoes to fill it's tough to shoes to fill and to believe in yourself that that you know, you have, I mean, I know I have a lot to teach others, but to be able to, to do it at that level, mm. um, you really have to, it was very humbling, right? you know, and you, you really, you kind of, I kind of had to wash some of that off and say, look, you know, I do know a lot and I need to share all of that. And it's, that was really, that was really amazing yeah. thing. And so this, uh, this past winter I started with my first few and man what an experience it was great yeah. you know people people in europe are so excited about about learning this and it's not just you know we're not just learning different adjustments it's not just a bag of tricks that we're teaching you know adjust first rib adjust the jaw adjust this uh, you know the cervicals and that but it's really like how to adjust anything mm the philosophy behind the adjustment exactly yeah. and applying that into your hands into your touch into your preparation into your body um your mindset and your communication with people and that is definitely something that's not taught at school mm. and it's definitely something that's missing from most seminars it's so unique and i've taken many seminars here um it's unique that it's put together there's a lot of seminars that are philosophical and a lot that are technique and to join the two together in such such a strength, um, it, it, you know, especially and then to bringing into the, the 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 physical part of it, the physical aspect of it that we do, mm-hmm. is really unique. And that's one of the things. That's why I kept coming back, and eventually was able to was to be prepared when the opportunity mm-hmm. came. Yeah. And so, well, I would um, I would encourage anyone. Uh, to go to MLS but what I would say especially is for uh, a first year or a second year who's just getting into it I would recommend go go to the seminar and go with an open mind and with no judgment like don't go with the thought that you have to absorb everything in the first go because for me I've been to how many do you think maybe five six uh, of the seminars and every time that I go I pick up something new and another thing that I would say is don't just pay and go to a seminar and say that was great i did a seminar and and forget about it if you pay money to go to a seminar and you're learning the adjustment technique or how how to train go and take some time it might be a couple of weeks and do the reps and practice the movements Mm -hmm. and also the other thing that you say at the end of that well i'll I'll let you do it at the Mm -hmm. end of seminars for when people go back to school because we were talking about this earlier so so that we don't get complications that way when people come to the seminar and then go back to the school and speak to the teachers yeah just shut the fuck up 
<laughs> there's um you know practice let your let your um let the proof show you know let your hands do the talking mm. you know there's a lot of seminars out there where you learn stuff or, or you get to adjust and you go back and talk about oh yeah i got to I got to adjust because, you know, it's frustrating as a student not being able to adjust people. It's all setups and, and mock. But to be able to actually put a force into someone is something that you need to do to learn. Mm -hmm. You need to feel it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was really something sometime, at some point in, in many different schools along the 35, six plus years that MLS has been around, at some point in every single school, it's been, oh, yeah, this is the one where you get to adjust people. But it's not. And, and we've actually uh, we've kind of taken a step back to make sure that we're more responsible about it. But, um, you know, um, you need to be able to put a force into someone, into something, with the, which you do with the mattresses. Yeah. But it's very different when you feel someone and connect, feel the warmth of their skin on your hand, uh, feel the depth and all the tissue underneath. And then connecting when you thrust into it to feel a proper adjustment release connecting or something that just maybe bangs against the wall, you know, and, and it doesn't and doesn't affect the nervous system, doesn't affect the system in, in the way that you want it. And there's a difference between that. And you get to feel that not you may not feel it because we've actually recommitted to not allowing people to put force into the spine unless everything else from the foundation up is good. Sense. Yeah, you know you can you can you know punch your your roommates you know at home when you're not in the uh, and you know you don't need to pay for that. Yes, please. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need to pay for that. But so we talk about just keep your head down, practice, practice, practice. Sleep with your spine; it should be filthy by the time you graduate, and um, you know, and, and by the time you hit clinic, people will see you, and you know, there's all those people. There's always the people in clinic that you know. Who are the great adjusters mm. you know who's got a bright future and you know who needs a lot of work mm. you know who's been taking it seriously and you know who, th who doesn't sure. and um you know uh, even but it's the same thing even with your classes you go you spend a lot of money on chiropractic education you got you should learn it i'm not saying you should master you know like everything that you learned you know we don't need to master uh i mean in the states it's you know uh, pi cases and insurance procedures i don't need to do that you sure. know but, you know, you, you do it well because yeah. when you do something, you do it well. Sure. And that's what that's what you got. That's it's it's lost a lot of times in education. And I don't know. I don't know why. I, I like what you said about the, the spine. That, that's one of the most. Um, that's one of the more profound memories from my yeah. first MLS. I remember Arno because I, I, I was in when you were still uh, assisting. Uh, I remember you uh, staffing me. But um, one of the things that Arno said was, it's amazing the amount of people that go to chiropractic college and they buy the plastic spine. I haven't got one in here, but uh, they, they buy the plastic spine. They go through the four, five, six years. And by the time they leave, the spine looks exactly the same. It looks like the, the day they bought it from yeah. the Onkiro. Totally. And I, yeah, that resonated because I think I just bought my spine right. and I was like, oh, so, and now it's, it's three years and the things, it's not completely wrecked. Yeah. Like you can still use it. But it is bent out of shape and damaged a little bit because it's just mock frost and trying to visualize it and taking it apart and putting it back together again. So it, yeah. it's it's little um it's little nuggets like that that you'll that's why I like going to seminars and going to them again and you'll you'll pick up the little golden nuggets like yeah. that. And I I was thinking about this the other day. Not just that I don't just like going to seminars for the content that I get into the seminar. I like going to these things because of the lunches that you have and you're you're around like-minded people yeah. and that's oftentimes you get your money's worth from a seminar in those moments yeah. like i was telling you um about uh whenever i was at the science of subluxation seminar and i got speaking to stina hertz right. at the at the dinner table totally. and that's I, I didn't go to the seminar to to speak to her yeah. but it was it yeah, was totally. great yeah you 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 go to a seminar and you know all you do is talk with your friends and you practice on you, you palpate the same people that you palpate all the time school, yeah, and then people. you have lunch with the same people that you talk to all the time and you don't have a full experience talk to different people touch new people 
it's that's what it's all about it's getting to know like-minded people and getting into the training mindset i mean getting a small group together and keeping that going Mm -hmm. once you go back to school i want to make it really clear don't just go to a seminar and go back on monday and go back to your normal life go pick up the four or five things that you want to learn Mm -hmm. and then train the hell out of it over and over and over well that that, well that was my technique that was reps Mm -hmm. i learned i'm more kinesthetic so i'm only going to learn by doing that movement thousands of times but then you've just had but then you've also just had a breakthrough recently on a different aspect of the seminar. Um, a lot of people get different things. People get different things out of the seminar. And for you, it, initially, it was practice and reps. But then just recently, you had a breakthrough. And, and you know, tell yeah, well, well, it was, um, you, you know, you go to the seminar and they'll talk about being being more open and being more present while you're doing the adjustment. Mm-hmm. And I was very probably mechanically minded. Yeah. So I was like, oh, like why do I? Yeah, I mean, talking about like mindfulness and talking about meditation. I and this is the paradigm that I came from. Whenever I first came to school, I would have been like, oh, like I don't want to do that. Right. Even I remember going to MLS and uh, Aaron Morris gave me a hug. Mm-hmm. And I remember being like, you know, I'm two weeks in BCC and I'm from Northern Ireland. You understand? We're not <laughs> huggy people. And I remember being like, what the hell is he giving me a hug for? Like, when it, whereas now you change and now you're more open. You're like, oh, hey, man, like, good to see you, you know. Um, but yeah, they'll talk about the uh, being open and being more present and connected. And I never really got that part. Yeah. And it's only four, five, six, seven seminars later and doing more work on myself. Um and maybe MLS would have been the catalyst to start doing that work um, and becoming more focused and present. And it's the connection to the adjustment and being with that person on the table as opposed to there's a bone here, I'm going to move it over here. You know, MLS was the catalyst for that. Yeah, um, that's that's the great thing for me rewarding wise is when people, after seminars, people email me or text me about what they got from it. And there's so many different things that they got from it some people it's the fact of being silent and on time taking you know having reverence for what we're doing Um, other people it's the presence other people it's open heart some people like you it's the the physical aspect of it or the detail or the touching of the head and and the respect or the getting to know someone's body type it's there's so much the body type was weird for me as well oh some people are earth and some people are wind and some people that yeah now i get it now yeah. i can think about it but at the time i was like what the everybody's the same you know yeah it's not just you know this uh in a fat mesomorph or you know like <laughs> you know this person's tall and, and this person's fat skinny. pigs this person's flabby and this person's skinny and this person's muscular no it's it tells it's so descriptive and it tells a lot about you know their experience because you know a subluxation occurs through experience right the body in fact, in some ways, a subluxation is a it's an adaptive measure of the of the body, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> if the spine was just a tube, a pillar, you know, a column to support us vertically, and we absorb a, a force or have a stress, it could break. The whole thing would break. Mm-hmm. So we say, you know, it's better to bend than break. You've got over a hundred articulations in your spine. You can bend many times and still function. You know, and the you know, the initial interference that a tiny subluxation might do to you could be imperceivable. The body is so resilient over time, obviously, when you don't take care of problems, they grow. So that's why we got to adjust. That's why we got to get adjusted and, and get rid of the subluxations. But if you if you don't experience anything, you're not going to have a subluxation. You're not going to have any stress. And stress is, yeah, it's all about growth. You know, it's suffering and stress is a part of life. Otherwise, you're not living, you know, and so... Those are the things we need to understand of this person that we put our hands on to kind of get a, instead of spending three hours talking with them and doing a history, which is great to do a history, but you know, like you could go on and on and talking with these people. It's, it's able to look at them and understand uh, these nonverbal cues and these things that they present themselves with on the outside. Mm. And you can tell so much about someone just by looking at them in what we call a snapshot and how you're going to approach that adjustment yeah and that totally that absolutely that 
then you know then we go into how yeah how to apply that knowledge into the adjustment whether it's uh, depth or approach or speed mm-hmm. um, speed of approach and amplitude speed should always be hundred thousand miles an hour yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah it's uh, I'm, I'm really glad you got a lot out of it but you know that's that's really when you see people change and you see people grow um, you see you, you really you really think of the big picture yeah. and, and all those other people that are getting that connection I would I would really encourage anyone uh, especially if you're starting out but then I'm biased because MLS was me starting out totally. but I would also encourage you you know if if you've been before or if you're a seasoned chiropractor we're gonna be in Amsterdam in September. Do you know the dates off the top? Yeah, twenty first and twenty second. Twenty first and twenty second. We're gonna be in Amsterdam. But if you don't do that, and and you want something a little bit more low investment, also I would really encourage people to join the MLS members lounge. Yeah. And and when you join it, like get involved. I was on the page the other day and I was scrolling down and I was like, I'm gonna rename this Facebook group to just let's watch. Zarek Bartley <laughs> figuring out chiropractic because yeah. you go down the page like yeah and it's me talking to myself like hey I think that I should uh, tilt my hips this way what do you guys think yeah. and then you'll scroll a little bit further down it's like oh today I trained for an hour I went flat out on, on, <laughs> on my little mattress and you know you got to put on some gangster rap sometimes and turn your hat backwards and just go for it and then I run you know or or me doing my fast I'm like right. I'm fasting this week <laughs> I don't want to do my mock for us and it's just you're all, let- you're all pale and sweaty like in yeah. the camera <laughs> <laughs> it's just let's watch Derek Bartley figuring out how to be a chiropractor over the years that's, that's what i'm saying you do a great job man <laughs> and you do it well so it would be a, an appropriate name and well deserved you know but um no, it's it's been a it's a pleasure it's it's really awesome um i think that um for for people i think for people in europe especially most of the, most of the people that come to the unfortunately are are already in practice in the states it's in the it's in the schools so people come it's a vast majority are students uh, maybe i think of the of the four or five i took when i was a student i saw two or three actual practicing vcs mm. a couple of them actually most of those people were already 20 years in practice looking for a fresh start right. just starving for that that's cool yeah yeah right. exactly and you need that and I think a lot of the DCs in Europe need that as well. Um, we talk about it in, you know, in Axiom and Carry Europe and stuff, but to then really practice it for a whole weekend is is wonderful. Mm-hmm. And um, but then the students obviously shouldn't miss out because you know you're getting a great education, <laughs> but uh, but it's it's not enough. It's not it's not gonna you're not gonna be a master if all you do is ace the test yeah. and it's never going to happen it's never going to be like that you have to do your own work you have to go different seminars there's so many out there there's some great ones and you know and yeah i'm biased too and and also you know like it's a great social place i met my wife there oh really <laughs> a lot of people met their wives there yeah a lot of people met their husbands i'm gonna keep uh yeah they keep going there yeah. I need to go, I, wait, I'm, I, okay in that case <laughs> If people meet their wives at MLS, I'm going to come to the Mexico uh, MLS. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, G- Jeremy Brook, Jeremy needed assistance right. at the you Mexico speak, one. You speak That's what I said that to him. I was like, man, like my Spanish is, uh, it's conversational. Opportunity and preparation. You weren't prepared. That's the thing. Yeah. Maybe I just need to throw myself in the deep end like there I did at Cario and be like, I'm going to try it and see what happens. And yeah. I'll get rewarded with a Latina wife a, that's a good adjuster. Just speaking in Spanish. Oh, that could be a possibility at yeah. some point. Yeah, just sure. pure immersion. Yeah. yeah. When I when I first moved when I first moved to Spain, I and my wife uh, we practiced and she did most of everything talking and I just did adjusting and uh, I tried to answer the phones. It was so tough. But um, then she, um, a, a chiropractor uh, Gretchen Miller who passed away. She uh, came to us and she was reincorporating from uh, from uh, chemotherapy. <clears throat> she had just had cancer and she was coming back. And so my wife went down to Pamplona on, uh, I think, like three days a week. 
to help out at her office. And so I was alone in the office. We hired our first CA and I had to do all the talking, all of the exams and everything. And, and, uh, and, and it was terrible at first, but that was the immersion that I needed. Right. And so it was that, you know, you just have to jump in for sure. Immersion. For yeah. sure. Well, thank you for coming on. Is there anything that you want to wrap up with before we finish? Anything you want to say about MLS related? Actually, yeah. The one in Barcelona is actually very special because we've got Wade Port coming in from the States. Um, he's going to be on staff with me. I'm going to be, I'll be the, the lead facilitator and he's going to be a, a, a helper. And um, he's just an amazing chiropractor. It's, it's, he's overqualified the staff on MLS one he right. does he's the lead facilitator for MLS two okay. and so the following week uh, so MLS one in Barcelona is going to be October 11th through the 13th it's a three-day one we do because of the Spanish uh, lifestyle a little okay. different you know yeah. um, you want to arrive 20 minutes late as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> me no but everyone else does and uh, <laughs> and then and then we'll do MLS the following weekend MLS two the following weekend the 19th and the 20th and so Wade's going to come in early and he's going to be, he's going to help out there for MLS one. It's going to be incredible. Yeah. It's never really been done before where that we've had two lead facilitators at the seminar. It's really cool. I'm really excited about that. And, uh, so we're actually going to talk with him probably at some point, uh, maybe do like a Facebook live or something. And, uh, he's That's really excited. Awesome. Yeah. Great. For sure. All right. Well, to wrap up, uh, go on Facebook and type in MLS members lounge and then you can see what the two of us are up to what kind of training we're doing and any of the upcoming seminars daniel sterling thank you very much for coming and speaking to me and uh talk to you soon